What do you get when DigiKey sends us one exciting new part and no limitations? We're about to find out. We're Tomorrowlab, a tech innovation studio based in New York City. Since 2010, we've helped startups and global brands turn bold ideas into real hardware that people actually use. And this is Potentially Genius, a series created in partnership with DigiKey. Together, we tap into their massive library of components to see what we can build around a single part. DigiKey is the trusted source that accelerates progress for every designer, buyer, and builder. Beyond just parts, they deliver expertise, tools, and resources that help guide you from concept to finished project. And in this episode, we'll put that promise to the test as we turn a featured component into something totally unexpected and potentially even genius. In this episode of Potentially Genius, we'll meet with Cecile Cruz from NXP. My name is Cecile Cruz, and I work at NXP in the analog and automotive embedded systems. And so what have you brought us this time? I have brought you the S32M2 integrated solution for motor control, and everything is in one single die, which means you don't have to buy your processing and your analog in different components. You have everything in one small die. So here you have the whole power to control a motor. We also have the communications module in there. So you know the CAN and the LIN, they are all, they are all part. So you not only have the analog front end for the motor, you also have the communications portion of it. It's secure, it's safe, it's all, all integrated in one single IC. Well, this seal is great meeting you and we're so excited to get started on brainstorming ideas and what we're gonna make with this. Good, I'm excited too. I just met with Dacile Cruz from NXP, um, and she showed me the NXP S32 M2 12 volt motor controller that I know we're gonna use for this project. This processor is built uh, with the ARM Cortex M3, and it replaces over 20 components with just one IC, combining analog, communication, and motor control functions, especially a really robust current sensing model. Specifically though, meant to work with three phase BLDC motors. I think those in the automotive setting give you more precise position control and speed control. So I guess given all those features, you know, what do you think we should make with this? If we used a motor without an encoder, just using the feedback provided by the chip, I think we could do a lot without even extra hardware. How granular is that current sensing? It's analog, so it, it's probably fairly fine-grained or you can choose the um, the resolution based on chip settings. Mm -hmm. I'd love to show that off. What are other examples in the world of products where we could bring smart motor control to something that is currently manual? A lot of kitchen stuff is manual and I think baking is very manual. What about ice cream? Ooh, I would love ah, to do that. That's cool. I mean, I've, I've made ice cream before and it kind of seems like the challenge is knowing when it's done. It's either manual and you kind of have to do it by feel and spend a long time doing that, mm. or it's automatic and you just have to keep checking on it over and over again. What if it, what if we leverage the sensorless aspect of this chip and created an ice cream maker that could tell if the ice cream is done just by, you know, the resistance and, and torque on the motor. That's fun. So you mean as it freezes from liquid to solid, we can sort of sense that additional torque mm, and right. then make some decisions with it? It would be cool if you could like set a, a torque preset for whatever ice cream you were making. Yeah, now you can just get ice cream with your toppings and it's perfectly soft serving. Yeah, delicious perfection with motor control. So this could show off, you know, not only the ability to add motor control to, you know, a product that doesn't have it, but also add additional points where you can interact with it in, in new ways. The ideas are churning. Yeah. The ideas are churning, <laughs> I like that. So I think next steps, what, what do we need in order to build this? We definitely need to source a motor. Um, and then we need to think a little bit about the interaction with it. So maybe we need a button, maybe some LEDs or a buzzer to tell you when it's done. And if we want to add the mix in automatically, we could use a servo motor. I would love to see how we integrate that motor controller onto this whole system. I think there's a few options we can explore. So what are the next steps on the kind of MEID versus EE? 
uh, sides. All right. So I think on the MEID side, I'm going to find Sandy and Amy, and I would love to retrofit it so that we can really emphasize and show off these motor control features with the current sensing and all that. And we're going to also maybe look into some sprinkle dumping action and motor mounting. How is it going to go on the EE front? Because I know we have to design around the motor um, and some other components that you guys are going to pick out. Sarah and I are going to have to source a BLDC motor that's 12 volts and that can provide enough torque to actually churn ice cream. Um, and on top of that, we're going to explore some other components that we might need, like the button, the lights, maybe a servo, and kind of see what we can do with the NXP IDE and the GUI that's provided. Yeah, I guess your motor is really gonna determine how our power transmission works, our, our gear train, um, and which path we go. There's so many ways we can go about this. Within these systems, I think one thing we need to uh, make sure continues to work to leverage the concept is that the gear train and the whole mechanical system doesn't mask the granularity in the data because we're using that as a signal to drive the rest of the product and tell you when to add the sprinkles. I can go over that with Sandy, Amy, and brainstorming, and we can choose a gear system that allows us to have high torque transmission, um, but still allow us to see the current sensing data. All right, well, let's get to work on uh, sourcing electronic components and also the mechanical system prototypes. Can't wait to show you. Cool, awesome. exciting. All right, so we have this NXP S32 M2 motor driver, and we're here to talk about what components are needed to bring this ice cream making concept to life. So these are obviously some power related capacitors. <laughs> what do you think those are for? Is there one for each phase, do you think? Hmm, probably. That's a good clip, right. So this is the chip, looks like here. Um, what are these blade terminals? Uh, so these two blade terminals over here are connected to the DC power, uh, which is the 12 volts. Power input, this is debug. Mm -hmm. What are these three? These three pins will be the three phases of the motor. I see the like pairs of FETs mm -hmm. here. Got it. Okay. And then what about all of these uh, male pin headers over here? So this long one here has pins for sensor controlled feedback. And then these two other pins are communication pins. So one of them is UART, um, which is used for the GUI. Motor connection, the buses. Mm -hmm. And I know this is normally used for the sensing, but in sensorless mode, we can use them as GPIOs, right? Yes. So we can connect our LEDs or button mm -hmm. to that. So we know we're making an ice cream machine and we have to retrofit an existing hand-churned ice cream machine in order to make it um, completely automatic. So you lovingly sourced this. Could you walk us through how the ice cream is made manually? Yeah. So with this machine, there's basically a frozen bowl that goes right here. And this is just an adapter. They engage with each other by aligning. And as you spin this handle, it spins the mixer. And over time, the ice cream gets colder and colder and it freezes. And with um, planetary gear systems, you can really trade torque for speed. So with high speed, we can actually change it into high torque. So with the planetary gear, everything is essentially relational, right? So you have this outer gear, which is called the ring gear. You have three smaller or middle-sized gears, which are called planets. If this is our sun gear, Basically, all we would need to do is you put it around the shaft of the motor and you tighten it. And now all of a sudden, the motor becomes the input and the output becomes the mixer. By copying this geometry that's already existing on the manual handle, we can take it and make the carrier that actually moves these planetary gears. And by rotating these three, it's channeled into one because everything is cocentric. So now instead of our hands churning, we're using a motor and it's spinning the fins. Right. Here's Sandy's wonderful gear design. Let's take it apart. This is just the motor mount that holds everything together and it's shaped to match the curvature of the existing lid. And what's happening here is the motor with the gearbox and uh, the shaft, which is the output. Sun gear is attached to the shaft of the motor. This gear is going in the center and it's engaging with all the gears. 
So now that we know how we're going to turn our manual system into an automatic system with this motor and the planetary gears, we have to move on to the fun part, which is a sprinkle dumper. So we started with a manual concept and that's gonna be this cup with like a rotating door in the sprinkle dumper. But we're actually gonna decide to go with an automatic system. Since training is automatic, we might as well have automatic sprinkles. So we know we'll have a automatic sprinkle dumper, which means a servo needs to be attached to a microcontroller. And that basically means we'll have a lot of wires happening. So we needed to do a little housing redesign on this main um, motor area. So here at the top, we have a clear cover and then some sort of ramp situation that will move all those sprinkles down. And then this door moves as the servo moves and the sprinkles fall down. I can't wait to see it. Oh, thanks. So I guess our next steps is you're gonna work on making this automatic sprinkle dumper and integrating it into a new pill shape design that we're proceeding with. Um, but that also means we're waiting on integration of the LEDs mm -hmm. and also making sure that we really tuck in all those wires for this housing. Yeah, exactly. And thinking about the assembly, so in what order do you assemble everything? Do we have enough screw access? Um, we kind of are thinking about putting the LEDs sort of right here, which is kind of the front of the machine, and then all the wiring can go in the back. It'll just be tucked here with the motor driver here and there will be an on button at the top. Sounds good. Let's do it. So Sarah, you've spent a little bit of time with the S32M2. How's it going? Well, we have the hardware set up now. I can demonstrate to you what's going on in the GUI right now. The first steps when setting up this board are to download the libraries and get the IDE set up. And then you can program the board. Once you get the example code downloaded, you're able to control the motor from the GUI. This is what our programming cable is for because you first have to flash the board with the example code. First, you might want to tune the parameters of the motor. Once you reprogram the board, you can come back into the GUI and it will do its initial alignment so it can run in sensorless mode. On top of that, we can change the speed. Oh, wow. That's a little too fast for yeah. ice cream. Oh, yeah, that's pretty check. fast. I can slow it down. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's, that's definitely helpful. So when you're adding resistance physically, we can see those current spikes, right? Yes. So you need a lot of pressure for it to fall. Essentially, it will hit an overcurrent fault if one of those mm. spikes goes above 30 amps and the motor will shut itself down. Can I try it? Yeah. If I put a little bit of resistance on it, I want to see if the current starts to climb. Oh yeah, it does climb a little bit. I kind of want to... Okay, cool. So it stops when it reaches yeah. that peak, right? And you can go back into this page and it'll show you that it did fall. I see. And it faulted because of an overcurrent. Oh, wow. And then That's you can cool. just clear the faults. Nice. So we need to figure out thresholds for when we want to add mix ins versus completely stop the ice cream maker. So I think the next step would be to test, make some ice cream, and look at the current thresholds on the GUI where we can export those current values to a text file and then determine what current thresholds we want to do those two functionalities at. Once we do that, we can add those current thresholds into our code and then see if we need to do any like kind of data processing to, to ensure that we are definitely above a certain threshold. Cool. So we're gonna test the ice cream today. Sarah will be looking at her gooey and spreading down the current. Me and Sandy will call out the times when we want to dump in the sprinkles and then when our ice cream is done. And we'll figure that out by seeing how thick it is. So I'm going to start the motor through this button over here. Wait, so what are you exactly reading when you're trying to tell when it's spiking? So this is the DC bus current overall. It started at about one or two amps, so we can really see that there is an increased uh, resistance on the motor, which is causing it to draw more current from the power supply. Figuring out the exact moment to add the mix-ins and when to call the ice cream officially done, yeah, that turned out to be a lot more of a challenge than we expected. 
After a bunch of tests, we finally nailed it. The sweet spot for adding mix-ins is right around 10.5 amps, and when it hits about 11 amps, that's when the ice cream is ready to serve. But honestly, the best part about building your own ice cream maker, even the test runs are delicious. With our resistance benchmarks dialed in, it's time to pull everything together. The NeoPixel LED ring, the push button, and yes, the automated sprinkle dumper. Once all the final pieces were in place, it was time to fire up the ice cream machine. Hi, Desiel. Welcome back. It's great to see you. Hi, it's great to see you too. We have had uh, a great time using the S32 M2 uh, motor driver, and uh, we came up with a lot of neat ideas and creative applications for it, but we're really excited to reveal today what, what we made. Good. I'm super excited to see it. Well, uh, obviously, this the NXP S32 M2 is meant for 12-volt uh, motor control. It's typically used in automotive applications. We don't have a car in Tomorrow Lab and we can't really fit it. So we wanted to focus on other, almost more like consumer applications. And some of the features we're looking at are really how to take advantage of this all-in-one system that replaces almost like 20 components with one IC. We mentioned the idea of like, you know, what's motorized and um, where could we bring this additional sensing capability? And the idea of, of ice cream making came up. Um, oh, my favorite thing in the world, yeah. ice cream. Yes. You like ice cream? I love ice cream. Well, question, have you ever made ice cream uh, on your own? I have tried, but it's hard because it requires really good ice cream like gelato. It requires a lot of shaking for it to have the right consistency. Exactly. Yeah. Consistency is really a challenge. Um, it's a very high torque application. If you're even if you're doing it by hand, it's a lot of like effort to, to yes. constantly move it. You have to sort of like constantly moving it. Um, it can be a little challenging, like any cream product, to know when it's done. Because if you want to have ice cream with stuff in it, you have oh, to, the mix-ins. The mix-ins. You have to add yeah. the mix-ins at the, just the right time because if you add them too early, they get completely pulverized. Yeah. The last bit is ice cream makers, electric ones, are very noisy. Hmm. But we had a motor driver, right? That was very quiet, <laughs> made the motors very quiet, yeah. and uh, could detect the consistency of the ice cream just from the motor driving. We could make a smart ice cream maker, almost like an ice dream maker, the ice dream maker, or ice dream machine. You ready to see it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> So we modified a manual ice cream maker. Here's the full contraption. So it actually attaches to the lid of the ice cream maker. We have an LED ring and a button to start and stop it. Here's where you put in your mix-ins. You can see inside, we have a spot for the S32 M2 motor driver. So instead of you using sensors and all the materials, to, you know, all the specifications to make sure that the car is you know, uh, doing the right thing at the right time. You do it to make sure that the consistency of the ice cream is perfect. Yes, it's exactly. I love um, it. Oh my God. <laughs> ne no, never in my wildest dream. It's perfect, guys. Like, I, you know, I've been seeing a lot of your projects and I, I always see how people get super excited, but I've never thought you will come with this super amazing idea. Well, we, uh, to see, we always ask in these episodes, did we create something potentially genius? You create something super potentially genius. <laughs> it was great meeting you. And um, yeah, we're super excited to share this with the rest of the world. To the extent possible, we're going to open source a lot of the code and the design files and put them on GitHub. So other people that, who watch this episode can yeah. continue to build on what we do. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, I'm even going to try and force my applications engineers to do one for me. It was, it was great. Thank you so Cheers. much. Bye, thank you. Happy weekend. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to our friends at DigiKey. Please be sure to visit the DigiKey YouTube channel to see our past episodes.